What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we're gonna to be talking about Blender because let's face it, Blender is a super powerful digital art software that comes packed with features. It's completely free and open source. And not only that, but a lot of artists are switching over from their expensive setups in ZBrush and Cinema 4D over to Blender because some interesting things are happening in the Blender community. Now, if you guys have never heard of Blender before or maybe have just dabbled a little bit here and there, I think this is a great place to start. Not only are we gonna be going over the most used features. We're going to be talking about reasons why artists are switching over so you can really hone in and understand whether or not this software is going to be worth it to you. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. With the introduction of Blender 3.3, there's a whole bunch of awesome new features and improvements that makes creating in Blender so much faster, easier, and fun. But at the same time, with so many features, it can be kind of confusing to wrap your head around what is most important to you. We're gonna be talking about the most useful features of Blender, what you can expect out of it, and how it's influencing the digital art industry. That way, you'll be up to date and know whether or not Blender is even worth your time. First up, we're gonna talk about these features of Blender because it's important to know what's even possible to do in Blender. The first and most obvious feature of Blender has to be the 3D animation component. Here we have a timeline and keyframe based animation, much like most softwares. However, there's also ways to manipulate your keyframes with their graph editor, which is a bit more in depth, and it also comes with modifiers as well. So I love how we can easily add a noise modifier to the position and rotation keyframes on a camera to create a quick, easy, and realistic camera shake to our scene. Not not only that, but the graph editor comes packed with handle types, interpolation options, and presets, as well as easing presets that make our life so much easier and our animations that much more fluid. For an entirely keyframe-less experience, Blender has also got you covered because there are ways to animate using geometry nodes, which is a node-based system that lets you combine various nodes and chain systems to create an impossible amount of customizable and procedural animations. With the use of geometry nodes and texture nodes, Blender has become one of the most powerful softwares for its node setups because artists are then able to create different node trees that allow them to do unimaginable things in other softwares. Take for example this creation using a node tree setup that allows someone to use a grease pencil to draw on vegetation. Honestly this is just the tip of the iceberg because I've seen creators do some amazing and awesome stuff using nodes right within Blender. One feature of Blender that definitely deserves to get talked about is their grease pencil. Now grease pencil is a tool in Blender that I think is super unique and powerful in that it lets you draw in 3D space so you're able to create 2D styled animations that are actually three dimensional and it creates some of the most impressive looking works that I've seen. Not only does it let you make 2D animations but it also lets you create cutout animations and motion graphics or even just use it as a storyboarding tool which is pretty impressive. Now when used in combination with their line art tools you can really create some amazing 2D looking animations that actually have a bit of depth and re-listen to them in 3D space. This is just really awesome to play with and I definitely think Grease Pencil is one of the most interesting features of Blender. Next, we have simulations. Now, creating simulations is an important part of many animations. Blender is very, very comprehensive, especially with their cloth-based simulations and particle simulations that allow you to create a bunch of different effects. Not only that, but there are amazing add-ons that were created by developers for Blender, such as Flip Fluids, which brings together a whole lot of awesome simulation tools such as creating liquid simulations that look super realistic, provide things like wet maps and a whole bunch more. So this is really awesome to see. And I really love the fact that we can get from simulating to rendering to adding in all these camera and compositing techniques all within one software. So simulations is definitely something fun in Blender. Blender is also pretty capable at 3D modeling. Blender comes equipped with comprehensive modeling tools and out the gate there are the tried and true box modeling methods such as vertex and edge modeling as well as a slew of modifiers that will help you create effects and looks, whether that's adding smooth edges with subdivision surface modifier or cutting shapes with booleans, as well as using mirror modifiers to create perfectly symmetrical shapes. There's just a whole bunch of awesome features and modifiers that help you get to creating interesting models right within Blender. Just take a look at some of these models that were entirely created using Blender. Whether that's architectural visualizations or characters, the possibilities seem endless. And once we get into the add-ons, 
oh boy does it get crazy. Next we have 3D sculpting. In addition to traditional 3D modeling, Blender has been gifted with 3D sculpting tools. 3D sculpting tools allow artists to manipulate 3D objects much like they would clay and Blender comes packed with a bunch of tools that are super useful such as their clay brush tool, pinch, flatten, and many many more. Now even though we're in Blender 3.3, sculpting is relatively new so there's definitely room for improvement. However, I've seen more and more artists switching from ZBrush, which is a super expensive software made by Pixelogic. It was originally used for Gears of War and a whole lot of movies as well. However, they're making that switch from ZBrush to Blender, not because it's free, but because it is really nice to have one software in your workflow rather than transition your assets from one to another and having to worry about all these different steps along the way. What's really cool is that once you sculpt in Blender, you can actually get right into lighting and rendering and rigging without having to switch softwares at all. Now ZBrush is still considered the king when it comes to 3D sculpting, but from my own personal experience, I'd say that Blender is very much capable and a flexible queen if we're sticking with chess analogies. I personally started out on ZBrush, but I switched to Blender because I loved the workflow and about 90% of the time, I actually didn't really need the extra ZBrush sculpting features. Also, surprisingly, switching to Blender was not as tricky as I thought it would be, and the learning curve of that was definitely much easier than it was to hop into ZBrush and understand how that one works. Next, we have 2D animation. Now, I am super impressed with the 2D animation tools that come with Blender. For a while, I was doing my 2D animation in After Effects after switching from Flash, but that required me to buy a $100 plugin just to have some very basic animation tools right within that software. Now, Blender came along and just completely crushed it because they provided all the features that I missed and more. So one of the really awesome things is that they have a very comprehensive onion skin keyframe manipulation tools as well as the introduction of stroke layers, which has been super awesome and I'm really impressed with how feature rich their 2D animation tool set is in Blender, especially for being something that is completely free. This is one of those elements of Blender that I didn't really expect them to invest in and yet I'm super glad that the developers spent a lot of time and effort to make sure that this came out right. Okay, here we're getting into rendering, which has to be another huge reason as to why a lot of people are switching from Cinema 4D to Blender. That's because Blender comes equipped with two really powerful rendering engines. The first one being Eevee, which provides almost real-time rendering. You can kind of think of this similar to a game engine like Unreal Engine in which you're able to preview your animations and your models and lighting all in real time. Now, of course, there are a couple of features that you're not going to be able to use when you're doing a real-time rendering, such as an Eevee. And that's why Cycles comes around and fills in those gaps by providing things like global illumination and brilliantly beautiful ray trace lighting. The awesome thing about rendering in Blender is that it tends to run super fast, utilizes your graphics cards efficiently, and they're always providing updates and improvements to make it really stand out. On top of that, you can also use some really interesting node tree setups to improve your rendering and composite it all within the software. So this is super impressive and I'm really inspired to see where Blender is going to take it in the future. So Blender also features a bunch of tools for compositing which can really help take any render that you've done in the software to a whole nother level using a comprehensive node setup you can easily make one render have a bunch of different looks without really adding too much time to the post processing or rendering phase I've seen a bunch of artists really utilize compositing to their advantage to make something that looks super interesting and unique right within the software of blender which is one of the most awesome and powerful things about it we absolutely have to talk about this feature as well in Blender, which is their video editing and VFX tools. Now on the surface level, their video editing is not going to challenge the likes of Premiere Pro. However, when you take a look at their VFX components, such as motion tracker, camera tracker, and plane tracker, you can definitely see that there is a huge use case for them when comparing it to something like After Effects. The beauty of these tools is that they let you create VFX shots without having to leave the software at all. And for the most part, if you're looking for something that requires 3D tracking or replacing images and doing some sort of in painting. You can actually do that all right within the software and you have a beautiful set of nodes that are going to help you make that process easier. There definitely is a long way to go when it comes to their VFX tool sets, but at the same time, out the gate for a free software, it is pretty powerful and impressive to use. Next, Blender does not stop there because it actually has scripting tools as well. So you can write your own scripts right within Blender, which is something that I've normally only seen in stuff like Unity or Unreal Engine. So it's really nice to have 
a set of scripting features right there in Blender. Now, I personally do not use scripting too much for any of my works, but different artists have found it to be helpful for them. And that's probably why they find scripting in Blender to be such a useful thing. And last but not least, Blender is completely open source, which is a huge factor as to why I find it to be so successful today. The reason for this is because not only does making their software open source and free help the community of artists, but it also helps the community of developers because Blender has one of the most comprehensive, diverse, and passionate set of developers that are constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible with Blender by creating their own add-ons and exchanging them on places such as Blender Market for everyone to use. And the support for add-ons is just so crazy because I don't see this happening in any other 3D software at all. There's nothing that even comes close to what's possible using Blender Market add-ons, such as this one for Blender, which creates procedural materials right there in the software, or even this one, which lets you import all the assets from Polyhaven. There is just a whole sea of awesome possibilities thanks to the fact that Blender is open source and free and allows developers to create whatever they want for the software, which is just mind blowing and really inspiring to see. Not only that, but I think more and more 3D softwares are gonna be trying to create their own communities because they found just how powerful it is when you have an awesome community of artists and developers working together all on one goal, which is making a software as powerful as it can be. Another thing to keep in mind is that Blender is constantly getting updated. So the developers are always working on ways to improve the software, add in new features, and always improve on some of the things that they've done in the past, whether that's making the UI a little bit better or making the features that much more easier to use as well as improving rendering and processing times. So I don't know what you're still doing here. If you guys are still curious as to what you can make, I guarantee you're gonna wanna check out this video because there are so many awesome creators pushing Blender to its absolute limits. We talk about their techniques, some of the add-ons that they're using and ways that you can actually incorporate those into projects of your own. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank you.